about the standards you're able. A high half resurrection, and I am love, I says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he dies. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. A high am resurrection, and I am love, I says the Lord. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up. And in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. I am resurrection, and I am life, says the Lord. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. I am resurrection, and I am life, says the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labor. Happy now on are those who die in the Lord. I am resurrection, and I am life, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. And I'll pray with you. Let us pray. O God, whose mercy cannot be known, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Laura, and grant her an entrance into the land of light and joy, in the fellowship of thy saints. Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from you, from the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. 
he will not suffer thy foot to be moved, and he that keepeth thee will not sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself is thy keeper. The Lord is thy defense upon thy right hand, so that the sun shall not burn thee by day, neither the moon nor the night. The Lord shall preserve thee. The wasting away, our inner natures being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what, at what can be seen, but at what, we, at, but at what, we, what cannot be seen. For what cannot be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly sense we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home, whether we are, we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. The word of the Lord. I don't speak to God.
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord your God. Very good word for us. The gospel lesson this afternoon. We gather on a, a word that was spoken originally to his disciples. In the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus reveals, if you will, to his disciples that he will not be with them much longer. He, he shares with them that there will be one in their midst that will betray him. He shares even with Peter that this very night you will deny me three times. And to those disciples who are, are struggling in that upper room, those disciples who are struggling with these words, these revelations, Jesus has a word for them. And I believe as we gather here this afternoon, Jesus has a good word for us. And that word is, let not your hearts be troubled. Let not your hearts be troubled. Our world is full of trouble. Our, our lives are full of trouble. Much trouble on the outside, often relationships and circumstances and situations, hardships and sufferings and trials and tribulations that we face day to day. As we gather here, this is, this is if you will, trouble that comes upon us inwardly in our own souls and our own hearts, much trouble. Confusion, discouragement, depression, and anxiety, and fears, and doubts. Our world is full of trouble. We are full of trouble. And Jesus' word for us is let not your hearts be troubled. We can have much trouble about us. We can even feel and sense much trouble within us. But Jesus' word for us today is that let not your hearts be troubled. How can he speak such a word? How can he offer such an encouragement, such blessing to us? I believe it comes in that next line. He says to his disciples, and he says to us, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus' antidote, Jesus' solution to our heart's trouble it is believing in God and believing also in how could that impact the trouble that we experience in the world? How can that impact the trouble that we experience within? We trace back trouble. From whence did trouble come? What is the source of all of our trouble? We would read in the Bible, it began at the beginning of human history. It began with Adam and Eve in the garden. When they chose to rebel against God. God had good purposes and good plans for them. And they were tempted by the devil, and, and they entered into sin, and they, they chose their own way for God's. And because of Adam and Eve's sin in the garden, trouble, a curse to the earth, uh, all the things, the circumstances that we spoke of. And if there would be one great trouble, 
one great trial, one great source of all fear in our lives. It's the fear of death. And in the midst of that, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and we all believe also in me. And Jesus would come and, and take on human flesh, God in human flesh, he, the very Son of God. And he would take care of the one problem that we face. The one source of all the trouble in the world is sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus comes and deals with our trouble. Jesus comes and lives a perfect life that God demands of all of us, that none of us live. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Jesus never sinned. He fulfilled the perfect life of righteousness that is that God created us for and purposed for us and holds us accountable to. And yet none of us live it, but Jesus did. He fulfilled the perfect righteousness. He lived a sinless life. And by believing in Jesus, that, that righteous life could if he will be credited to us, that our hearts would not be troubled. But Jesus' mission, Jesus' is coming, had a unique purpose. And it wasn't merely to live, but he, he came to die. He came to die the death that we all deserve. The wages of sin is death. And Jesus, though he committed no sin, his mission to come was to come and to die. Why? Because we were separated from God by our sin. All have sinned and fall short, and that sin separates us from God. But Jesus comes and lives the life that we don't live. And Jesus comes and he dies the death that we all deserve. Why? So that our sin might be forgiven. That we might now be restored in right relationship with God. How? Believe in God. And believe in me, Jesus says. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he comes on a mission to die. He dies for our sins on the cross, but that's not the end. Three days later, Jesus rises triumphant over the grave, over sin and death and hell. This is the gospel message. This is the message that we have of great hope. That there is one who lived the life that we don't live, who died the death that we deserve. He rose triumphant over the grave. And that brings us great hope in times of trouble. He doesn't say just live this way. He doesn't say just do these things. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. And believe also in me. He goes on and says more there. Our great hope that we have even here today. That in my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, what I have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, surely I will come back to take you to be with me where I am. There's the great hope that transcends this life. That by believing in God, by believing in Jesus, that he has gone, triumphing over sin and death and hell, ascending to the Father, he has gone to prepare a dwelling place for us. And surely he will come back to take us to be with him where he is. Our hearts long for heaven. Our hearts long for all things to be right. And Jesus speaks of that perfect place where perfect, perfected people dwell in heaven. And he says he is going to prepare that place for us. I vacation in Ocean City, New Jersey. And many times I kind of just drive down the main street there in Ocean City, New Jersey, whether it's Central Avenue or whether it's Ocean Avenue. And I look at some of the houses that just kind of look out onto the, to the beach. I, I love the ocean and I love the beach. And I look at these beautiful dwelling places. And I just imagine what it would be like to live and be able to look out my window and look at the ocean, look at the beach. And I, if you will, like I'm sure many of you do, we daydream about what a beautiful dwelling place made with human hands that are just one storm away from being wiped off or wiped away, how much greater a dwelling place that God has made not with human hands. But Jesus himself has gone to prepare 
and to, if you will, build for us in heaven. Our hearts long for this place. And death is not just our enemy, but now death serves us. That by believing in God and by believing in Jesus, we are taken to the very place that God has prepared for us in heaven. One of my favorite psalms is Psalm 16, verse 11. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. And our hearts long for fullness of joy. All of our joys in life are so temporary. But there will be a fullness of joy. There will be pleasures forevermore as we are reminded of this great promise that Jesus has purchased for us through his perfect life, through his death on the cross, and through his rising again. For our hearts to not be troubled, they need to be rooted in great truth. And Jesus says this. And, 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 and Thomas even questioned, surely uh, you know the way. And Thomas, well, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And the great truth is that Jesus says, I am. I am the truth, and I am the life. Jesus is not a way, he's the way to God. It says that no man, no woman comes to the Father except through me, Jesus' words speak. He's truth, he's the embodiment of truth. What do we know to be true? We can see what is true in the person and work of Jesus Christ as recorded in the scriptures. And he is life, everlasting abundant life. I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus offers to that by living great lives, by being great people now, by believing in God and by believing in Jesus Christ. We can have great hope. We can gather here today, even in the midst of mourning, even in the midst of grief, even in the midst of loss. And while our circumstances may be difficult and they may not change, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. Let's bow together for word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for the comfort your word brings to our lives. Even in these readings, even in this song this afternoon, and in the reading and the proclamation of your word, you meet us by your Holy Spirit. You comfort our hearts. You, you bring joy where there is sorrow. You bring peace where there is turmoil. Lord, you bid us to simply come to you, all who are weary and heavy laden. Come to me and find rest for your souls. Lord, I would pray that for this family. I would pray that for these loved ones. That in a special way, as we share in this time together, you administer comfort and you administer peace. And you administer shalom by your spirit. Receive the glory we pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would stand if you were able. The congregational responses are in bold. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say together I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. Resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray the words of Savior Christ.
Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 7 of your bulletin. Please use the responses in faith. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant we beseech thee to thy whole church in paradise and on earth, thy life and thy peace. Amen. Grant that all who have been baptized in Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and date of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage, who walk as yet by faith, that thy Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Amen. Grant to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind. Amen. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in thy fatherly care, that, passing all their grief on thee, they may know the consolation of thy love. Amen. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a reasonable and holy hope, in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Amen. Grant us grace to entrust Lord to thy never failing love. Receive Receive her into the arms of thy mercy, and remember, remember her according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people. Amen. Grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of thee, she may go from strength to strength in a life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Amen. Grant us, with all who have died in the hope of the, the resurrection, to have our consummation and bliss in thy eternal and everlasting glory, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Thomas, Blessed John, and all thy saints. Receive the crown of life with which thou dost promise to all who share in the victory of thy Son Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy sins. Where sorrow and pain are no more, thou desire, but life everlasting. Thou only art immortal, creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and unto earth shall we return. For so didst thou ordain when thou createdst thee, saying, Thus thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. All we go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but thy life everlasting. Into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant law. Acknowledge we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive her into the arms. Sorry. Receive thee into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, be in your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, keep, and preserve you all, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen from the dead.
dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen. Give light to those who sat in the darkness and in the shadow. Into paradise may the angels lead thee, and at thy coming may the martyrs receive thee, and bring thee into the holy city, Jerusalem. So we come to the committal, the time where we complete the work that we have been doing today. We're doing good work today, important work. And I invite you to join me as we complete that work in the burial of Laura. The uh, liturgy for uh, the committal is on the very back of your bulletin. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor, but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins art justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts, Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour, through any pains of death, to fall from thee. I invite as many of you as are able or willing to take a handful of earth or a shovel and to help us with this process of burial.
Please continue as we pray. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Laura, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Almighty God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, who by a voice from heaven didst proclaim, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Multiply, we beseech thee, to those who rest in Jesus, the manifold blessings of thy love, that the good work which thou didst begin in them may be made perfect unto the day of Jesus Christ. And of thy mercy, O Heavenly Father, grant that we, who now serve thee on earth, may at last together with them be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to her, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. If anyone would like to continue casting earth, you're very welcome to do so. <laughs>